and good evening volleyball fans and welcome to Kaiser Permanente Arena in downtown Santa Cruz, California, the home of the Santa Cruz G League Warriors and also your UCSC Banana Slugs. Today is the first official broadcast of the UCSC women's volleyball team making it the first in school history. Alongside is my partner, former UCSC women's volleyball player Haley McDaniel. I am Rizal Aliga. Tonight's matchup features the visiting Mills Cyclones and the UCSC Banana Slugs. And I'm bringing my partner now, Haley McDaniel, a former UCSC volleyball player. Haley, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm really excited to watch this game. It's the first one of the season, so let's see what's going to happen. Definitely. Now, you played, he you played with the team last year. Can you give an insight of who some players to watch of the Banana Slugs? Definitely. So I know Sierra Ewan's coming back from an, uh, from an ankle injury. I don't know if this is her first game back or if it's her second, but she was just getting back to it. And uh, she's definitely one to watch out for. I think she's playing opposite today. Uh, definitely Claire Okerlund. She's been on the kills lately, which is really, really great to see. She's come a long way. Same with Rachel. Rachel's Vivin. She's a libero. And Alana, too. She's a great setter. And Mills with the first service. Claire Oakland with the hit. It's a free ball coming over. And the first point of the night goes to the Banana Slugs, leading 1-0. Back to serve is number nine, Rachel Sveven, also known as Chi. <laughs> Chi. It was a great up by number three. Gio Martins. A nice little bump set to opposite number eight, Elizabeth Hoagland. And that's the end of the rally with a point going to the Banana Slugs. Still going back to serve as number nine, Chi. I always love watching Chi serve. She has the best floater, jump floater that just goes right on over. How long has Chi been playing for the Banana Slugs, Haley? She has been playing for three years. She's a junior, so I, I've known her as a freshman. Uh, what what have you seen most of her game since uh, her frosh year? She is a hard worker, so she just strives to improve all the time. She works. She's just worked so much on her serving and her passing, and just her voice out there on the court, which definitely makes an impact. And like Haley said, she has two aces in a row so far. Banana Slugs leading four zip over the Cyclones. She with another good serve. Cyclones yes. unable to return. And that's three straight aces for the Banana Slugs. And a timeout on the floor. The Cyclones are unhappy. Oh. Haley, what do you see? What do you see so far in this in this game? Well, I just see a lot of hustle. I mean, they seem really sharp on their moves and everything. Uh, the serving's great. The passing's awesome. They're getting it right to the setter. Um, the sets are just going all over the court, and it's just really, really nice to see that they're spacing it out so everyone can get a chance to hit. Mm -hmm. Haley, have you gotten a chance to learn the new names of the UCSC coaching staff? Well, I met Gabby. Um, mm -hmm. The head coach. She, yeah, the head coach, when she was on a tour, and I was in the gym. She was really nice. Um, I think she's a great fit for UC Santa Cruz volleyball and the culture that um, she brings and that is already established at UCSC. Mm -hmm. um, I love Jerry. Jerry's just, he's a great guy. And I haven't gotten a chance to meet the assistant yet, but I heard really great things about her and her skills and her coaching ability. Definitely. And once again, the Banana Slugs are 4-12 and of the season. They lost two straight, but their new coaching staff and the team has been fitting very well, as I talked to some of the players earlier this week. Back in action, she with the serve, Mills returning with the tip. That was a nice approach. A nice approach by number eight, Isabella Hoagland. Slugs lead six zip in the first set. And she is still serving. Oh, she with a great dig. Alana setting it up to the outside and Claire with a hit down the line. Solid, solid and hit. That's that one-two punch, Haley, that 
number one, Alana Suskilla, to number 20, Claire Okerlund. Did you see that one-two punch last year? Was it? Do you feel like they ha they're gelling more this season? I think so. I mean, they have eight new freshmen coming in, which is a lot, but they also have their core group of girls that are from last year that just know they bring an amazing culture, and it's definitely a good fit. Definitely. They're all getting along well. And according to the roster, Haley is correct. There's about six new frosh and about two new transfers on the women's volleyball team. So a lot of new bodies for the banana slugs here. Mills is on the board now. Still trail 1-7. Nice. Claire with the swipe off the hands, the block, and just goes right out. Pretty good work using, her hand, using the other team's hands and just artistry. Mm -hmm. And coming in for the slugs, number four, Timelin Keppen, and number 11, Maddie Fowler. Timlin's, I believe, the transfer, and Maddie is the frosh now in the game. Number four and number 11, respectively. That was a nice work of scrapping between the slugs. It was close to the net, and they got blocked down by Mills. Um, slugs got it up and hit it over again. That was really nice. Really nice to pick it up and get organized again. And now serving number four, Timelin Keppen, the new junior transfer. Mills with the set. Claire again. We got a touch. Got a good rally going so far. Nice. Gio was set for a 10 in front of the line, so she knew not to jump. That was a very smart play on her move. Now the Slugs lead 10 to 1 in the first set. Assistant coach here giving some commands. Oh man, that was a good one. Mills couldn't return it. Hit it, bumped it over the net, and Claire just killed it right over the net. Nice hit by Claire Okerlin, the referee is making sure the players are okay. And that service falls short, giving Mills the second point of the game. Mills serving number three, Maisha Williams, the senior middle blocker out of Oakland, California. She to Keppen, Okerlin over the net. Chio with a nice up. Number seven, Alex, Alex Everett with a nice kill through the middle on the right side. I love it. Haley, what have you seen from both Alex and Claire who's been getting most of the points so far? Excuse me, Claire has, but what do you have you seen both from Alexandria Everett and Claire Oakland for the women's volleyball team? Just good communication. I mean, they are just, their priming is perfect with the setters. They're with Alana and with Timlin. Mm -hmm. um, they're just, having great timing and that's really important and going up for a set especially in the middle and that was smashed down by number 19 Maya Sears the outside hitter the frost outside hitter excuse me and serving is number 20 Claire Okerlin that was a perfect block by number 11 Maddie Fowler and number 7 Alex Everett it was perfect timing. You could hear them talk on the court. Ready, up, one, two, three, and they mm -hmm. just got the perfect block. And that service falls short for number 20, Claire Okerlin, giving Mills its third point. And it looks like Haley, it's supposed to be 17-0, but so far there has been about two to three banana slugs mistakes, giving Mills at least some points on the board. Yeah, and that's okay. I mean, no one can be perfect, but it's it's really nice that they are just making very minimal mistakes. If it's anything, they're just you can just see the effort on that. They don't mean to make the mistake. So mm -hmm. that's really good. It's definitely a change from last year. And now into the game is number 10, Jordan Kirkner, sophomore middle blo blocker. That last point was smashed by number seven, Alexandria Everett. And she is serves over the net. The free ball coming over from Mills and Jordan with the up. Kirkner, Keppen from Fowler. Nice set up there by number four, Timlin Keppen to number 11, Maddie Fowler. Oh, 
it is scrapped. The ball just came over. There's a little di little difficulties with communication, but they ended up getting it. Beautiful. And a point goes to the Slugs. Now lead by 14 points in the first set. Let's look at this clean replay. Haley, what you think? Uh, just good communication. Um, Jordan really knew where she was going with that. And just went well in her favor. Alex back to serve, number seven. Oh, that's a serve, all right. Oh, you can handle it. Sorry. Oh, that's Kept on with a nice up. Alex with a set. Unfortunately, that's a double. Got the double in. Valiant effort, though. I know Alex really loves to get her hands on any kind of set that she can. Definitely. She was practiced at before the game. Should have practiced a tiny bit more, but it's definitely different between practicing pre-game. Oh, yeah. All medals want to be setters. Good timing. It's a great up between Claire, straight to Kepon, and then just a crush of the middle. Nice job. Subbing into the game now, number six, Isabella Talamantes, and number eight, Isabella Hoagland. Both new frosh to the women's volleyball team. And back to serve is number six, Isabella Talamantes. Slugs lead by 14. Oh, it's almost over. Nice. Number 19, Maya Sears with the tip over the net when no one was home. What do you think Mills has to do to adjust or like get some more points in this first set, Haley? Serve receive is definitely key. I know we served some really nice floaters just right over the net. So mm -hmm. if they can get their serve receive down just a little bit more, I think it would be good for this solid set. And the slugs are killing it with the serves. Mills unable to return many of these services. Talamantes. Yes, the A's. Riz, what do you think UCSC's doing well? I think UCSC's very dominant of this game so far as Mills takes another timeout. They are trailing by 17 points in the first set. Looks like this first set's gonna go to the Cruz, and hopefully Mills will be able to see what's going on, make some adjustments with their coaching staff, and get some more points on the board the second set. Absolutely. What always helped us is if we just move around our serve receive just a little bit, just move one person, and it kind of messes up the server a little bit, which is sometimes exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. So just make that slight adjustment, and that could definitely... Once again, UCSC Athletics would like to thank its sponsors, Woodstock's Pizza, Under Armour, KZSC Santa Cruz, and the fans for their continued support of Banana Slug Athletics. Once again, alongside my partner, former UCSC women's volleyball player Haley McDaniel, and myself, Rizal Aliga, we're here at downtown Santa Cruz at Kaiser Permanente Arena, the home of the G League Santa Cruz Warriors, and your UCSC Banana Slugs. Once again, this is the first ever women's volleyball broadcast in school history so we thank you for joining us taking time out your day to watch this historical broadcast nice the slugs with the big celebration it's really nice to see that just all smiles on the court everyone loving just playing the game and back to service, still number six, Isabella Talamantes. Slugs need three more. That's a nice up by the mill serve receive. Oakland. Chi. Oakland. Ah, oh, that was a great, that would have been a great kill though. She came up with a nice approach and just gathered all of her energy and just put it right into the ball. It was really nice to see. Back into the game for the Cyclones, number three, Maisha Williams. And a service error for Mills. And back into the game for the Slugs, the Frosh, number three, Gio 
Martins. Slugs need two more. With the serve. Nice floater. Oh, ball's tied to the net. And UCS, he doesn't want to come over. And we have first set point for the Banana Slugs. A little scrapping to get it over, but they did. And Chi Chi to Talamantes to Kirkner. Martins. Talamantes. Okerlund is met at the net by number three, Maisha Williams, that senior middle blocker from Oakland. Claire will get that back, definitely. Absolutely. Set was just a little tight to the net, but still Kirkner. Great. And that's the end of the first set with the Bananas looks taking a 25 mil Cyclones 6. Welcome back to the broadcast of the UCSC women's volleyball team against the Mills Cyclones of Oakland. Alongside is my partner Haley McDaniel, I'm Rizal La Liga. As we look, get a quick replay provided by our excellent camera crew. Nice, you just see the great kills and the teamwork from that replay right there. Nice set right here. This is, I believe this is one of the midpoints of the game where Jordan got lucky with that net. That was a perfect set by Tim Link Hepon to Jordan Kirchner who just knew where to put it. And once again, the Banana Slugs took their first set over the Cyclones. And these teams have met before. Earlier this month on September 14th for the Slugfest at the West Field House. That game with UCSC taking it easily, 25-13, 25-14, 25-19. However, I believe the last two sets, the head coach put in some of uh, the frost or newcomers to the team. That's why the score was so close at third set. But it looks like right now the slugs look to dominate and get out of here, but these fans are very supportive behind us. Got the men's volleyball team, as well as the rest of the UCSC students. We got a big crowd here. I love, I'm feeling the love. Now serving is number three, Gio Martins, the freshman. 
That was a great serve received by number 23 on Mills. 22, I idea. Mills unable to control that hit by number 20, Claire Okerlund. And as we look at the first set stats, looks like this Banass looks all over Mills being way more aggressive. UCSC with 14 kills that set, Mills with zero. Definitely on the attack right here. So it's Killa, so it's Kirkner. Now, Slugs lead 2-0 in the second set. Martins with the serve. It's a great up by number 22 again. Says so Killa to UN. Oh, that was a great kill. Sierra just found the hole in between the block and just put it down. There was a lot of power in that hit. How do you, what do you think Sierra's thinking about on the floor, Haley? I know, like you said, she missed a lot of time last year doing an ankle injury. How do you think she feels being on the court again? Oh, she loves it. Sierra is there for a reason. She is, in my opinion, one of the hardest, like one of the people that's on the heart of the, the, heart of the team. <laughs> she has just an amazing spirit and she's so encouraging. And she's just a really good volleyball player all around. Sierra, you win number 16 of the slugs from Hawaii. And we have a sub in for the slugs. Coming in is number seven, Alexandria Everett, the junior middle blocker. And back to serve is number nine, Rachel Schwieven, also known as Chi. Ball's over the net. And Chi with that perfect serve. I've known Chi for three years. I've played with her for two. She has, it's all muscle memory for Chi. Her serve is just muscle like memory. A, all perfect every time to save. That's the key to a good serve. It's a good up by Libero, number 13, Amanda Aurelio. A nice tip by number three, Maisha Williams of the Cyclones. Slugs lead five to two. Service is short. Slugs lead by four. We have two subs coming in for UCSC. Number four, Timolin Capon. And number 11, Maddie Fowler. It's great to see local girls on playing with the UCSC Slugs. Cassie Nickel, Tim Link, Hepon, and I from the same hometown. And it's really nice to see Redding represent. So have you have you seen both of those players play back home? Absolutely. I remember I was on varsity. I'm older than them. I'm, I graduated before they were on varsity, but I just remember them and JV playing some really good volleyball. Wow. That was a valiant effort by Mills. And where, where are those players from, Haley? Where, uh, where are you from? I'm from Reading, which is about four hours north, and mm -hmm. they went to Foothill High School. Got it. They're always a good rival for us, so it was really nice to see some local girls getting some to the NCAA level. That's what it's all about. Do you feel like as an NC2A player, former NC2A player, excuse me, that you received a lot of pressure, especially at Santa Cruz, trying to play volleyball, trying to be a student athlete? Yeah, but then again, as an athlete, you, you play volleyball for a lot, a lot of your life, so you already kind of know the discipline of it. It's definitely a few notches up from anything that you've ever experienced, but the experience of it, regardless, is just incredible to play volleyball. And this is definitely something for those players, because a lot of things are going through their mind. As a student athlete, you have to hide everything, and you have to be a positive person. Absolutely. And it's just so hard to, like, hide that and you have to perform so well on the court. 
Absolutely. You have to be really well time managed because even at college, you know, these classes are way harder than you realize. Mm -hmm. And then just being on the court all the time is, takes, takes a takes lot. Takes a toll, definitely. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't have traded it for the world. It was definitely one of the best experiences of my life. Awesome. And there's a timeout by the Mills Cyclones. Trying to get things together, trying to make some more adjustments. Trail UCSC by nine. First set was taken by the Slugs, and now the second set almost halfway done. The Slugs are leading. Up next for the Slugs. On Friday, October 5th, they're at Laverne for the Leopard Invitational in Laverne, California. Then they face Whittier. Then on October Saturday, October 6th, that's a Saturday, they're at Pomona Pitzer and play the Salas for the conclusion of the Leopard Invitational. The next home game for the Banana Slugs is October 10th. That's a Wednesday at Kaiser Permanente Arena. Hopefully, me and Haley will be on the call. For Absolutely. more information on our games for all athletics, you can search online, goslugs.com. That's G-O-S-L-U-G-S dot com. As we look at this quick replay, back in action. Looks like the slugs were like a tiny bit late to react on that, Haley. Yep, the roll shot just went right to the middle of the defense, and there was a little reaction to it. There needs to be a little bit more communication on that side of the slugs. Nice up by Chi, a back set, and Alex Everett with the kill. That was a great, just a great timing, and just see everyone meshing on the court. Now serving is number 20, Claire Okerlin. Claire has really stepped it up this year. I'm very proud of her. Nice roll shot by number 19, Maya Sears, the outside, the frosh outside hitter, excuse me. That was a great set to the outside. Nice, Alex, number seven, Alex Everett is on fire right now. Just put a lot of passion to that punch with his kills. Alex and she, the only two juniors on the floor right now. Looks like, oh! looks like the head coach of the Banana Slugs wants to put in more of her new players to see if they can get more play time and or just to get a more feel of this floor because this is a brand new arena for the Slugs to play in. Not sure if we have a medical timeout and or the Cyclones players are communicating with their head coach. They're worried about their bench. Trying to figure out what's happening, but. A little confusion. Back in action now. Oakland with the serve. Nice look right there for Mills College. That last point was by number eight. Lissy Simmerman. The ball might have been going out, but Mills took it anyways, and they had they had the hustle trying to get it back in. Here in that seat, we're all about Slugs lead by 12. Looks like the bench is having fun on this on the sideline. <laughs> yeah, they are. I love it. There's some good vibes going on tonight. Fowler, Kirkner. Look at a replay coming. That was a good wind up for number 11. And then followed by number 10, Jordan Kirkner. Now back to serve number seven, Alexandria Everett. There we go, there we go. To the outside, it's a little tight, but wow. What a kill by number 19, Maya. Wow. She got up there, Haley. 
Yeah, and that was a close set to the net. So I was, I was wondering if she was going to do it, but I shouldn't have doubted. That was a great kill. Looks like we have another timeout on the floor by Mills College. We want to give a quick shout out to everyone who's tuned in right now, who's watching the first ever broadcast and commentating of the UCSD women's volleyball team. Alongside is my partner, Haley McDaniel. I'm Rizal Liga. Those who are watching in their dorm rooms, apartments, or even across California, this is the Mills Cyclones against UCSC Banana Slugs. There's a lot of good volleyball going on tonight. So, Haley, what do you think the Cyclones need to do to improve? Um, so right now I think they it's still just a little bit of serve receive mm -hmm. and just more communication. Because if a team doesn't communicate, it just falls apart. And that's just, it happens sometimes. So it's just something that one person needs to step up and th it'll just fall fall into place. Mm -hmm. And Banana Slugs lead by 14. And back to service number seven, Alexandria Everett. Slugs look to claim this second set. It's quiet from the mill side, but I can hear the slugs talking away. Definitely, Haley, and communication is key in volleyball, as we see in this last point. Some miscommunication right there. Do you feel like Mills needs to be louder or just talking more? Just talking more. Just like, I got the ball. Like it's, it's, you know, my pass and my set, everything like that. Oakland. There's a tip in the middle. Got a good Number rally 11. going on. Nice. Real good rally going on. From the 10 in the back row, just a roll shot, and the outside Maya picks it up. Mills still keeping it alive. Nice tip right there. Everett to Fowler. Mills again. Oh. And we have the point, Mills. Let's look at this replay, Haley. It's a good roll shot to the corner. It's too just powerful. just a little miscommunication. It's feel like pretty deep and you just have to cross and sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. You feel like Oakland was a little bit out of place or she should have took a couple more steps to the left to receive that ball? Yeah, usually when the ball is that deep and then the, the, left, the left back is really short, mm -hmm. the outside has to run and go pick that ball up in the back. Got it. And now into the game for the Slugs, number 16, Sierra Yuen, and now serving number one, Alana Saskilla. The junior setter from Union City, California via James Logan High School. Good rally again. Some free ball going over. Again, a little miscommunication. Haley, for those who don't understand volleyball terms, what does free ball mean? Is that it's like a ball for anyone to get, or is it too light, or is it too does it go over the ball? So a free ball is when either the the setter is out of play and you just can't make a hit out of it, and you just pass it over the net, mm -hmm. or when you're just scrapping for the ball, just something to get it over, so you don't, so you can just get ready for the next play. Usually free ball, it needs to be high over the net, so you can just get right back into position and ready for the next Got it. dig. And now serving is the Frosh, number three, Gio Martins. Mills with the ball. Alana, to UN. Alana again. Martins to UN. Oh, everyone was just standing up on that one. It was a little hard to get to. And now into the game for the Cyclones is number five, Nina Tompkins. Looks like we have a, a bench warning or if the coaches is telling these, the Banana Slugs players to just back up a little bit. Yeah, I heard that there was a warm-up zone so there was no water bottles allowed on the court. Interesting. 
But oh. then again, they're a little enthusiastic. <laughs> That's a nice back set. So it's Killa to Okerlin. Claire splitting the block. So when you split the block, just goes the ball just goes right through the hands of both the blockers. And that was perfect, as you can see in the replay. Just too powerful. Chi back to serve, number nine for the Slugs. Slugs need two more to get this second set. Not sure why the players over there were sitting. Yeah, that's a no-no right there in volleyball. And, that, and that's regardless who you play. Oh, anybody. of course. It's just a whole. If your whole, if your team's standing on the court, you're going to be standing on the sidelines. So, Haley, do you know why, or is there a reason why the players sit, you know, far from the bench and not, you know, like on the bench? Is it to get a certain angle or to cheer them on, or? Sometimes I think the coaches want some space. Other oh. times, um, definitely when uh, the ball tends to be scrapped, when it's scrappy, they just go behind the bench, and it's just hard to run through players and. There's a lot of us, so you have to stay definitely towards the end of the bench, and so you're not crowding the whole court as like as you're getting closer to it. And that last replay provided by our excellent camera crew. Smash down by number seven, Alexandria Everett, leading to set point for UCSC. What a great triple block by number eleven, Maddie Fowler, Alex Everett. And Claire Oakland. That just went off of all of their hands. That was a great one. You can see the timing. Just one, two, three, and they go up together. That was a great teamwork. So are you only allowed to have a maximum three blockers in the middle, or is that? Well, sometimes it's a double block. The outside can come to the middle and block. But right now that they're, they're doing the triple block, um, there's pretty much only the front row can jump. Mm -hmm. And the back row can't jump in front of the 10-foot line. So Got that it. would be a missed point. Haley, what did you see from those banana slugs the second set? I was, it was just great. They were not, not afraid to open up and just swing at the ball. They're passing their defense. Their eyes were on the ball. They were just moving all over the court. That was really great to see. Mm -hmm. And the slugs taking that second set easily, 25 to 8. Got that first set, 25 to 6. And once again, we're in downtown Santa Cruz at KPA. And UCSC would like to thank its sponsors once again. Woodstock's Pizza, Under Armour, KZSC Santa Cruz, as well as the, support, the endless support of the UCSC student body present here today. It looks like we have a great turnout. Got a lot of the athletic teams in the building. Got the men's volleyball team, some men's basketball players here, and a bunch of the student body on the other side of the stands. Yeah, there's a lot of athletic support here. I really like it. It's been improving throughout the years since we passed, uh, we just passed measure 68. 68, correct. Yeah, that was that was really hard work for, for everyone there to save athletics, and we did it. And now it feels like there's a whole unity between the teams, and there's a big support, and that's really nice to see. A lot more presence and a lot more spirit and community yeah not like, only from jump from just the athlete athletes themselves you see friends inviting friends players inviting family etc saying hey come to the game downtown come to the game at the west come to the game here etc and you see we see the turnout coming and turnouts will there will be way more better turnouts throughout the year Exactly. Considering this is the only second day of school. Yeah, wow, I can't believe school started. That summer went by really fast. It definitely did. And the slugs heading into the third set lead two sets to none. Haley, I was actually talking with the coaches earlier this game. They said that they have a strong bond with their players this year. And as mentioned earlier, the players do have like more of a relationship. Not saying they, they, had a, they did not have a relationship with their prior coach, but now 
they feel more connected in one on one, getting to know each other, getting a stronger chemistry. Yeah, I think it's really nice that we have a, a woman head coach and mm -hmm. we have a, an assistant. Um, yeah, Chimo. Uh, but it's really nice that, you know, there was just a good cr good transition with Gabby coming in. The team was just had their hopes high for her, and it paid off. She's an excellent coach. She has great coaching technique, and mm -hmm. she's very positive and encourage encouraging, and that's just what UCSC Volleyball needs now. And they love it. They received it well, and they're all getting along. That's just really great to see. Definitely, definitely. And the start of the third set, Mills with the service. She, Saskilla. <laughs> Number three, Jill Martin says, my bad was in the wrong spot. She might have been a little too shallow on the court. Usually you're supposed to stand about three feet um, in front of the back line just so you can look at everything and move to each side. If you're doing it, it just depends on the defense also. Looks like number 11, Maddie Fowler, misstepped on that or wasn't expecting a weird set by Alana. And Mills with the quick lead, 2-0. And another mistake for the Slugs. We'll turn this around very quickly, though. Oh, right, Haley? absolutely. They'll get it together. They always do. Says Killa. It's from Fowler. Williams. Nice triple block again. Williams Just again. Number Williams. three, Maisha Williams. She just really picked out that empty spot right there that no one was at. It's a very smart play. Just towers over. Very tall player, number three, Maisha Williams of Mills. That's the momentum we're getting back. Number eight from UC Santa Cruz, Isabel Hoagland. Just really hammered it down to get that nice kill. Back to serve is number nine, Rachel Shreven, also known as Chi. Do you think that was a high school nickname, Haley, or did she earn that here at Santa Oh, Cruz? we we gave it to her here. Well, I, no, actually, she has it at home, but we kind of we like to ask before when the season starts, what are your nicknames? And I think that's how we re relate more to each other and get closer. And uh, her family does call her Chi, and yeah. uh, she just told us about it. And we're just like, all right, we're, we're going to call you Chi now. No more Rachel. She with a nice service. Mills able to return. And number three, Gio Martin saying, my bad again. Let's look at this last point, Haley. Just needs to be a little bit more read and react on Gio's part. Still a little too shallow. She should be a little bit further back, about a foot or two. But other than that, she's going to get there. She's close. Mills with the service. Lead 5-2 in the third set. Martins says Killa. Everett. Everett is denied by number three, Maisha Williams. Has the last three to four points for Mills. Get this quick replay, Haley. Everyone just looks like that they're still moving forward, just waiting for the attack. And the attack already happened, and they're still going forward. So something where you just need to stop and stay low and get ready to react to it. This is Killa. Fowler. Nice. Got a touch. Alana. Valiant effort by Mills trying to get that ball back over. Just couldn't, couldn't get to it a little bit fast enough. <laughs> Almost ran to our cameraman, Sean, on the sideline. Once again, big shout out to our camera crew here at KPA. UCSC trails by three. Nice. He just called everyone off right there and just picked up that free ball. Alex just gets up there with her two hands and just knocks it down, giving the Slugs a point. That was really good communication right there. You could hear Sierra Ewan and Alex from, from over here just saying, yep, you got it. Just put it down. It was, that was nice. It's teamwork. And again, everyone calling it out. And Slugs get the point. Quick replay again. Everyone's hands just fly up. No, 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 don't touch it. Do you feel like players, do you feel scared when players get so close, like when they fall the ball out of bounds, Haley? Yeah, I, I think so. But then again, it's like our, 
it's just another sense that we acquire. Like, we know that we can be inches away from the ball, but that is still out. And his last replay. It was a good approach by Sierra Ewan. All tied up here in the third set. Six all. Slugs with the momentum now. And the Cyclones take a quick timeout after getting the last four points. Here in the third set, Slugs lead by one. Alongside my partner Haley McDaniel, myself, Rizal Liga. Haley, what do you see so far in this third set? Looks like some communication problems in the beginning for the Banana Slugs, but came back now up by one. Absolutely, there were some communication problems, but I think it was just um, just a part of the slugs getting maybe a little lazy, you know, there's this set three, they're, they're ready to, you know, just win and take it home, but you just can't let your guard down at all because teams will come back and um, I just, you know, they're picking it up, so yes. it's just nice to see, like, they're just, they're done being lazy, no more, no more mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's something you just have to keep that mindset throughout all, every single set. Definitely. Out of that timeout, called by Mills, trailing by one, and now serving for the Slugs, number four, Timolin Keppen. Mills again. Chi. Keppen. Wow, that was a great approach. She really got some height on that kill. If you're watching the replay right now, just her approach was perfect, and she just jumped super high. That was just, that was a great kill. Great kill by number eight, Isabella Hoagland. Number eight on Mills, Lissy Zimmerman tries to roll shot, but Slugs return and say no. A little communication issue right there with Mills. Definitely, definitely shows that communication is key when you play volleyball. It's a very technical sport. Slugs lead by four. Keppen with the serve. Williams with the tip. Chi. Keppen. Hoagland. It's a great swipe right off that block. You know, it's just when you go up there and you see the hands like that, you just, you know, there is another opportunity to get a kill. So when you just swipe it off the hands of the other opponents. Williams with the roll shot. Martins, Keppen, UN. Keppen, Martins, a lefty. It's a great kill. Look at this replay again, Haley. Keppin. She was ready for it. She knew that she was going to get that 10, and she was just winding up for it. It was a good spot. And still serving are the slugs. And Mills grabs that point. Good call, Xander. Good stuff. I like what I'm seeing. And Maisha Williams back to serve for the Cyclones. Now trailed by five. Keppen, Alex, behind it, still able to get it. Well, it's going deep. Gio got caught a little shallow again, but we reacted positively to that. It's all good. She knows you can tell the look on her face, but that's okay. Slugs get the point. Isabella Hoagland with the service. That was a nice house one number four setter on Mill, Stephanie Morales. Nice set up there by number four, Timlin Keppin to number seven, Alexandria Everett. Look at the quick replay. Nice tip. That was a good jump set and a nice tip right to the middle where no one can react. Hoagland. UN, Keppen, Everett. Nice. We want the tape. We watched this replay. Hey, kill is a kill. Even if it hits the net. That was a good, good swing on Alex's part and a great set by Keppon. Oh, 
This triple block is really working for UCSC tonight. It's a, definitely a good timing, and that's a factor with the triple block. You see them all go up together in that replay. Spacing is key, though. It is. We don't want any rolled ankles going on. Hoagland. Kipon. Wow, number 19, Maya Sears. You can just see her drum so high and wind up for that really powerful kill. It's beautiful. And we have a sub coming in is number six, Isabella Talamantes for the Banana Slugs. And it looks like we have another timeout on the floor. Slugs lead by 10 in this third set. Look to close it out after winning the first two sets easily. It was some good momentum. We kind of struggled in the beginning, but it was nice to get that momentum back. And you knew just when everyone started getting loud again and cheering that they were just going to come back. And, and they did. That's a 10-point difference. Yeah, four, 14 to one run for the Banana Slugs. Before it was six to three Cyclones. And Slugs come here stomping back, looking very energetic out there. Coaches just had a quick meeting. And it looks like we have our one of our athletic trainers out there, Kaylin Dios, taking care of her student athletes as well. Oh, we love Kaylin. Kaitlyn is a great athletic trainer. We have so many, we're just blessed with so many great trainers in the sports programs. Definitely heal us. <laughs> Once again, sports fans. The next home game for the Banana Slugs is October 10th. That's a Wednesday at Casa Permanente Arena here at 7 p.m. For more information, you can check out GoSlugs.com. Follow us all on social media at UCSC Athletics. Back in action now. Slugs lead by 10 in the third set. Oh, tight to the net. Chi, Talamantes, UN is denied by number eight Zimmerman of the Cyclones. Look at this replay, Haley. This replay, you can just see Sierra just can't get her footing quite right in the approach. So that was just a little bit thrown off by that. But they got the next one. Looks like we got Talamantes communicating with her team. Chi, Talamantes. Sears. That, was, that was a good one. That was a little low, but they knew how to react and change that. It was a good change. Good roll shot down the middle. It was smart, smart hit. And Everett, the junior. Cyclones over. Everett. Cyclones with a tip, over, Everett. Nice. Got a good rally going on. And it was out, UCSC with the point. That's just even more momentum coming to UCSC way. I think they're just really looking to close it out now and have some good communication. up with the serve. Chi with the perfect pass. Wow, that was, a good, that, was, that was a good play right there on UCSC's part. Just a lot of hustle going on. A lot of communication. Slugs lead 20 to nine in the third set. Saskilla to Chi. Sears over. Nice hustle, Chi. She got that dig with that one arm, one arm scoop. 
It's okay, that was a good look by number 11, Matty Fowler. Look at this quick replay provided by our excellent camera crew. It just looks like her shoulder was a little turned out and just more angled towards the outside of the court, but that's okay, it happens. That was a great up by number 19. And a set and a kill by Matty Fowler. Redemption right there, as you see in the replay. Lana with the high set to the outside and Maddie just really put it in the right placement down the line. Oh. Nice, right, just a small mistake on Mills outside, number three. You see SC ball at 22 to 10 to Mills. And back to service number three, Gio Martins. That was an excellent serve by Gio Martins. So you just see that float right barely over the net. Those are somewhat hard to pass. Just have to be ready for them. And back to service again, number three, Gio Martins. The Frosh coming in. Excellent serve. She's really putting a lot of power on it. Mills is struggling to get it back. Martins, Saskilla. Oh, Alana with the up. And Mills end it in the net. So UC Santa Cruz is out of rotation. Um, goes point to Mills. It looks like uh, Jordan Kirchner was a little out of rotation just on the other side of the setter. Just have to be in the right placement at the right time. Lana with the back set and the slide to Jordan. And Slugs with the win. You see that nice replay and that slide. And that's the end of this game with the Banana Sucks taking it in three sets over the Mills Cyclones. Great action between both the teams. UCSC had a little scare in the beginning because the Cyclones got them very quickly, but UCSC able to close it out and get that sweep over the Cyclones. And the crowd showing some love. There's a lot of people here tonight. This is really great to see all the love and support for women's volleyball. Definitely, definitely, Haley. And once again, the final score with UCSC taking it in three sets. So Haley, what are your thoughts about the game? Um, my thoughts about the game is that there was just a lot of hustle. Uh, it was a fast-paced game on the UC Santa Cruz side. There was a lot of great ups, fast sets, and just fast reactions to the ball. The approaches were really great. Um, it was just an all-around good communication. We, you know, we, we had a little lax in the, the beginning of the third set, mm -hmm. but that still worked out in our favor. We all gained the momentum back, and they carried it throughout Definitely. the rest of the game. It's really good to see. Haley, how, how comfortable do you feel like the slugs were out there? I know this is a, a large crowd for them to deal with, but you know, do you feel like they, they dealt with the pressure uh, very, uh, very well? Oh yeah, they, they definitely did. Um, I think they really loved it. I think that powered them more to just play even harder because we're not used to really big crowds. Definitely. Like It's an up and coming and it's really nice that they feel the love and support so that drives them even more to, to play better and to just, just have fun. Definitely. Joining us in a few moments, we have the head coach of the UCSC women's volleyball team and we're just waiting patiently for her before she talks to her team but looks like we look to grab her. Once again sports fans the next upcoming game for the Banana Slugs is October 10th that's against West Valley College at 7 p.m. and this next week they at Laverne for the Leopard Invitational in Southern California. Look, 
Well, Coach is very popular tonight. Oh, I love She's it. Getting a lot of uh, looks right now. Talking to some looks like some athletes. Yes, prospective players. Interest. That's awesome. Looks like Coach is trying to get some players recruited. And she looks to join us right now on the headset. Oh, other way, Coach. Perfect. We got to look at this camera right here. Hello. Hi, Coach. Congrats on the win. That's awesome. So what do you think that uh, UC did, UCSC Volleyball did great tonight? Like, what were their strengths? I just felt like um, we played great as a team. Like, we, everyone got to play tonight, and it didn't matter who was out on the court, um, but I felt like everyone did a good job. We had good um, energy, very consistent with our serving and passing, and I just thought everyone played really, really well tonight. I think we did all the things really good. Definitely. I agree. Yeah. Coach, in the third set, your team was trailing in the beginning. What did you tell your team to do? And then after that, they won a 14 to one run. In the beginning, it looked, it looked kind of uh, out of sort. What did you tell your team to do? Uh, I just said, let's continue to keep playing up mm -hmm. and um, just play the way that we know how to play. And, uh, you know, Mills was doing a good job of uh, making some good plays. And um, so that was good for them. And I just, you know, we just have to keep continuing to play our game, even though Mills uh, was doing a good job of getting some points scored so yeah absolutely so what is one thing that um, you know when the momentum falls what do you have something that you guys do to just try and pick it up do you have cheers do you just you know just have the captain say quick words of encouragement? Yeah, the captain say quick words of encouragement. Um, on the sidelines, the teams do their own cheers. I actually don't have <laughs> anything to do with the cheers that the teams do, but they have their own, and uh, they get really excited about it. If we're down or trailing, typically we just, um, you know, kind of take a deep breath and get reset and um, just go back to what we know how to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like they're having fun out there on the court and yeah. on the sidelines. It was really, really great to watch Yeah, tonight. it was a good game. Very excited. Coach, there's two more questions before you go talk to your team. Your team has a week break until your next game and the at the Leopard Invitational. What are you going to tell your team this upcoming week? Going to give them more rest, more communication um, stuff to work on? or? Yeah, so we're going to be resting. Um, tomorrow and Sunday and then we'll have three days of practice mm -hmm. and the three days of practice we're just going to keep focusing on um, you know just getting better at the little things because going into Laverne I think there's going to be some tough teams so we just want to um, work on the little things like mental preparation definitely uh, still serving and passing but um, you know we have those back-to-back -back tournaments so uh, the rest is important but really it's just about managing that time and um, being being able to compete hard uh, two days in a row, match after match. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, also, do you, um, I was going to ask about the crowd. How great is this to have this much of a turnout here with all of these athletes, all of the community, the, a lot of the community showing up? Um, what do you think about that? This was awesome. I had no idea that we were going to have such a big crowd. I mm -hmm. loved having the men's volleyball team. They're very vocal. I know. They're the they best. were doing a great time. Uh, you know, just a great job. Just you know, with all the all the cheer and the enthusiasm and it is great and I hope that we keep getting more and more fans so we only have one more game at KP arena so I hope that we can continue to continue to fill the seats definitely coach yeah and once again that's the new head coach of the UCSC women's volleyball team Gabby Houston coach Houston congratulations on this win thank you very Congrats, much coach all right <laughs> on behalf of UCSC athletics Opers, Kaiser Permite Arena staff, as well as our excellent camera crew. This is Haley McDaniel. I'm Rizal Liga. Thank you so much for watching this presentation of UCSC Athletics. We'll see you next time, and make sure to follow us on social media, UCSC Athletics, or check out our website, ghostlugs.com. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you.